Hello, everybody. That was a nice little ching we just got in the background by our guest today, who I will get to in a second. This is K-Rail reporting live from Park City, Utah. And this is Grand for Longevity podcast episode number six. I believe it's number six. We're entitling this show today, um, Trolls, Scammers, and Scamps, I think. Something along those lines. And it is my great pleasure to have my guest on today, Mr. Jim Romig, all the way from Redding, California. But before I get there, I need to get some pleasantries out of my system. If you are going to get a pre-workout formula or a protein powder or some kind of supplement that you're going to put in your body, for God's sakes, stay away from the stuff with the artificial sweeteners, colors, and flavors in it. Acetylene potassium is hard to pronounce, and it shouldn't be in your body either. Red leg number 40 is an artificial color. You don't want that in your system either because it gunks up inside your kidneys and liver, and you don't want to cause any more damage than you've already done. We want to reverse the damage in life, people. So stay away from the artificial ingredients, the artificial crap in your supplement. Reach for something good and healthy and clean. Like pine pollen superfoods, for heaven's sake. It comes in a nice tincture bottle. You can put a liquid, squirt it under your tongue, let it sit there for 30 seconds, swallow it, and out the door you go. Just give yourself a chi hit. You can get it in powdered form as well. You can put it into smoothies. And that is all I got to say about that right now. Okay? So now, let's get down to business. Mr. Jim Romig is on the other side. He's a good friend of mine. He's been in the health and fitness industry for years, much like myself. He's got a solid background in kettlebells, bodyweight training, yoga, movement the guy is a master he moves like a ninja he moves gracefully like a giraffe like a giraffe ninja and he's quite funny as well and he's got a really good sense of humor and he looks at light he looks at life differently like than the average person does he sees it through a lens that is very matter of fact common sense and right down to the point i'm gonna apologize ahead of time if jim happens to throw a swear word out there or two because that's just the way he rolls so if you have any young kids watching at home you might want to put them to bed early or block their ears like this, and that, like they did in um, what name of that movie was with um, Will Ferrell, but it was hysterical. Monthly the earmuffs movie. thing. The earmuffs thing, yes. So anyway, old school. Well, old school, yes. <laughs> Without any further ado, I introduce you, Jim Romick. Jim, thanks for joining me today, and please expand a little bit more on your background. I'm sure everybody that doesn't know you is going to know you very soon, and they want to know a little bit more. Oh, dude, you you did a pretty damn good job, if not better than I could ever say. I thought you were talking about somebody else for a minute. I was like, shit, this guy sounds pretty cool. Who's he talking about? Oh, okay. all right, it's me. Never mind. But, uh, man, like I just uh, – I had the fortune of learning from a lot of really, really cool coaches and organizations throughout the years when I was a part of Wolf Fitness Systems back in the day. And mm -hmm. I was a co-owner of that for eight years or something like that. And then that closed up shop, and we moved to Reading, and I've been a part of – I started an internal roots movement been a part of this uh, gym up here called Balance Point Fitness and Athletics, and it's been a wonderful family. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't like talking about myself really, so <laughs> well, that's about as far as I'm going to go with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Well, let me, let me do the talking about you and your, in your place. And I like the word internal roots movement, and that brings me to a, a good segue. Let's talk about movement, shall we? Um, we shall. As, as you are well aware, as me, you know, we started a little collection of people about a year ago that we called the Jedi Council. We've had a lot of gripes in the fitness industry um, that we talk about behind the scenes. But one of the things that that kind of angers me more than anything else is all this mass amount of like free workouts people are dishing out. These fitness guys come out early 20s and stuff. And I don't know if they're trying to just get if it's an ego thing or, or they're trying to gain position or gain, you know, mass amounts of followers to, to push an initiative or a project. Or, or a workout program that they've created or some kind of supplement they're pushing or whatever. But this whole thing about just giving away all this stuff all the time to people, these high intensity workouts, where not even knowing one iota about how somebody moves. I mean, I am always cut of the sword of you, you have to prove to me that you can move well before you can grab and implement a kettlebell, a barbell, a dumbbell, a medicine ball, anything like that, or even grasp a pull up bar. And when I start someone out, when someone is brand new to me, the first thing they do is I'll spend the whole training session just doing body weight drills. I want to see how their push-up is. I want to see how their core strength is. I want to see how they can do a squat. I want to see how their flexibility is. I'll have them doing side angle things, um, off-balance drills, standing on one foot, hand walking on one foot, doing push-ups on it, doing rolls, different things like that. To me, it's all about the movement. And I know, I, I'm guessing that I'm talking into a mirror right now when I say that about you. And I would like you to expand a little bit more on that too. What's your kind of philosophy when it comes to that? 
Well, if you were talking into a mirror, your reflection would be much less attractive than you. So uh, <laughs> know that right now. But, uh, dude, it's just you, you covered it, man. It's all about movement. It's all about, well, obviously, shit. To, uh, like it's all about knowing what you're doing people, when people put out high intensity things and they put things out there they're, they're appealing to the masses people yeah. want to sweat they want to work hard they want to do the intense sexy things because that's what people are doing or that's, what's, that's what's cool or they figure that's what's going to get them the results but they can only do that until they get injured you know and yeah. this is a vicious cycle we all, we all know that one so yeah. it's like why not skip to, the, skip to the part where it's like hey I'm just going to do this well so I can keep doing it and I can build on it yeah, you know, and so I think with, it's not a, a mass appeal thing to do things well and to take your time and to break it down because people just want to get rolling. They just want to get going. They ain't got that kind of time. Well, they do. They just don't want to make it. So yeah. like if they don't want to take that kind of time to do it. And so it's people, it's not sexy and appealing. So not a lot of coaches want to take the time to do it, you know, and if they do, they want to make a dollar off of it or they want to make as much as they can off of it. So it's yeah. kind of a weird little place where you're not a lot of most people won't get somebody to truly think about what they're doing unless they get paid in person to do it you know yeah. other than that they're just going to put out those high intensity workouts hey do this 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 and have fun with it with you know giving people way too much credit thinking hey they, they can already do this really well it's like mm, you're not doing it. you're it's kind of putting a lot in people's hands to they need to take responsibility but at some point like when they're looking at those high, hard workouts it's too much responsibility for them so they're thinking, I got to do that like that guy's doing it, and they're going to force themselves. And it's, it's not made clear beforehand when people often, often, when they put these things out, hey, make sure you know this stuff well and make sure you're tuning into what you're doing and go, don't go too hard. Go as hard as good form allows. Could be that easy, but no one's going to take the time to do that. Yeah, you, know? you said you, you brought up a lot of good buzz points there. Do as good as you can as long as good form allows. And I always work off of a 90% quality or better principle. So if you can demonstrate to me that you can do that kettlebell snatch with 90% quality or better, we're going to implement it and we're going to go forward. And if you can't, we're going to work on it until you get to 90% quality or better. And the other thing or, you said, which also or, ran, struck a chord with me, is if it's not fashionable or sexy. And that's kind of how it is. Everybody wants to, It's kind of like the magic, the magic pill theory based in fitness. So people want to have the magic pill to lose the weight, to get in better shape, to reduce arthritis, or not arthritis, but inflammation. Um, increased brain function and stuff. They want the magic pill, done deal. But they don't want to do the work involved with, with doing something that's going to last them for an eternity, for a lifetime. And that's where mm -hmm. I know you like to get down and dirty and make that stuff happen. And I can tell you right now, people, yeah, um, doing overhead squats is going to get your heart rate up. It's going to work every muscle in your body. You're going to get jacked back and core and arms and the whole nine yards. You're going to get it. However, and you're going to get your heart rate up and you're going to sweat like a pig. But I guarantee you, if I put you in a room for 10 minutes with Jim Romig, and he put you through some of these ridiculous stretches that he does, you're going to be sweating like a pig and crying like a two-year-old at the same time. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> when he has you stick your hand on, he has, it, he has you anywhere near a wall, you're going, to be, you're going to be shaking in your boots, or at least you should be. I'll warn you ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just so easy to – we're our, as human beings, we're incredible at approximating movement. We can look at something, and it's like, hey, I can do that. And, yeah, you can. But are you articulating that movement? Are you getting all the fine points of that down? Or are you just getting the job done? So when we spend time to articulate things and really tune in with what we're trying to move, how we're trying to move, whatever weight we're trying to move, it's a whole lot different than just doing it. Yeah. Because there, we can never do it perfectly. So there's an infinite amount of improvement we can do. And it's not like we have to spend all of our time improving. We got to test it also. But we usually don't spend time articulating. We spend time just kind of loudly putting out a message, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's a good way of putting yeah. it. <laughs> um, Glad that landed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So I want to talk about um, your philosophy on, on diet, because I've seen some of your um, Instagram pictures. You're usually fitness oriented with all your, all your social media stuff, which is totally fine. But every now and then you'll throw in a little – a little Facebook live or a little like Instagram story and something's frying in a skillet. And I'm like, Oh, I'm licking my chops. I'm like, I'm going to gym for dinner tonight. <laughs> so I want to know kind of like where, where are you coming from as far as not necessarily, you know, uh, Atkins diet or anything like that, but where are you coming from as far as what do you feel is ideal for you? And what is your take on what you feel is ideal for the mo most people, average people as far as diet goes? Oh. Oh, obviously everyone's different and everything's going to work. Some things will work differently at different times for people. Like what worked for me 
a couple of years ago might not work now, you know, or I had to be, I had to change it or something like that. So I think different things work at different times in life. But for me, like I've just kind of honed things in for a long time and tried different stuff. And I really like to have a lot of liquid nutrition throughout the mm -hmm. day. So like I'll have a lot of, I make bone broths every week. Sometimes I'll make two, like six quart things of bone broth that I'll cook for 20, 24 hours, something like that. And then I'll put them in mason jars. We do like bulletproof, not just bulletproof, but like we'll mix a lot of like different cacao, ashwagandha, mushroom powders and other stuff oh, in our nice. coffees and teas. And then we do lots of smoothies and juices, but mm -hmm. we'll usually do at least one or two, like, or maybe just one big solid meal a day and some solid snacks also uh -huh. like fruit, fruit and nuts and nut butters and things like that. But uh, I just love cooking in cast iron skillets and then yeah. either doing meat and eggs or eggs with just a bunch of different vegetables and sometimes like a grain like rice or things like that because I'm Filipino and I can't not eat rice. I love it. So like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is incredible. You're not going to believe this. I have got the weirdest, craziest cravings you could possibly imagine in the mornings when I'm working out sometimes. The other day I was craving buttermilk pancakes. The one day I was craving sourdough mm -hmm. bread with butter. The one day I was craving, this, the past few days I've been craving white rice, not, not like brown rice, long grain brown rice, white rice with soy sauce the past yeah. few days, like ravenously. And I'm like, what is up with that? Is my, are, is my sodium levels low or something? Or um, I don't know, am I rice deficient? But Who I guess man? It's so Maybe bizarre. you just like tasty food. <laughs> <laughs> totally totally could be um i want to expand a little more on some of those things you mentioned ashwagandha did you say um you say cacao ashwagandha did you say maca mm -hmm. okay maca, so mushroom powders whatever mushroom with powders. different things at different times yeah <laughs> um do you ever use moringa moringa oh the moringa. greens yeah it's a green yeah. it's like an alternative to uh it's not green it's actually a um kind of like a tannish color moringa is a um a sugar substitute, but it's digested differently oh, than. Oh, I was thinking of moringa. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. no, well, I haven't used moringa. I was just curious. So a lot of those things you mentioned are. Um, uh, I use probably most of those things. Um, cacao definitely use every day. Maca I use every day. Um, I've been using collagen lately because I've been doing this yeah. high intensity. I've been using it doing this high intensity kettlebell protocol this past month that I designed about I don't know five years ago when I was going for my strong first. It tore my hands in smithereens. And that summer, I started taking a good digestible um, collagen powder. And I'll be damned if that didn't just like clear my hands right up in days. I mean, I'd have massive gashes and they would just like heal overnight. Like my hands would be so sore, I'd barely be able to sleep. I'd wake up the next day and they'd already start mending. And I was taking that stuff religiously like twice a day. And this past month, I did that same protocol and I've been taking the collagen all month and my hands have been um, pretty much perfectly fine. I mean, I have the typical calluses. But I really nice. like that stuff, and I like the collagen with the uh, gelatin in it because it helps with gut re rebalancing the gut flora as well. Yeah. So that's just one more thing I add into that. Yeah. Now let's talk we about thought, we have that stuff too. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's good stuff. So let's talk about fasting. Um, for those of you watching at home, don't forget to get fasting the movie. It is on Amazon Prime now. If you didn't, if you didn't realize that, to make it nice and easy for you to watch it, and you have zero excuses now. And even if yeah, you're I've not been planning to watch that, man. <laughs> That you and your wife have to see it. Even if you're not planning on fasting or don't want to fast ever, I highly suggest you still watch it because of the scientific research and data that's in the movie. It's very profound and it's very eye-opening. And I get in arguments still to this day, every day of the week, with people that's telling me, oh, you got to work. You got to have protein and carbs an hour before workout and half hour before workout or else you're going to go into catabolism and blah, blah, blah. That's completely untrue. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. I don't care. I've heard it from doctors. I've heard it from nutritionists, dietitians. The very same doctors, mind you, that have had about five total minutes of nutritional training through 20 years of school that they've gone through. Those same doctors, yes. Um, do you do any form of fasting? And if so, what does it look like? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've been doing it for a long time, actually. But I it's, uh, it's always, it's always I, what was that book? Is it Clean? Alex, Alexander Hunger? Something like that. It was like a juice fast book from years ago, know, right? Yeah, after I read that, after I had a really bad concussion, I was trying to clear my head out, and I read about that, and that got me into fasting, and oh, it's sorry. great, but man, unless it's, it's definitely a hard, uh, hard learning curve and adjustment, <laughs> because like when you're not used to it, god yeah. damn, is it hard to not eat, like, yeah. and, you know, and you're so <laughs> used to eating, and you know, most of us were like, oh, you have to eat every two hours for 
yeah. decade, you know? So it's like, we, we all, we all kind of had it ingrained in us. We had to keep pounding down in order to keep going. And then we weren't comfortable with that whole like catabolism kind of thing, but dude, yeah. life is ebb and flow. We got to have that kind of stuff. You know, you yeah. got it. You're building up and you're breaking down. It's just a cycle and yeah. we're constantly doing it. So like, why not? And then the, all the times I, that I finally did get into it and when I stick to it and you're doing it, you feel great. And yeah. honestly, it gives you a lot of, when you're doing it for a long time, you can have a good little cheat week and you'll be fine. Exactly. Like, it's so exactly. cool. You're like, oh, okay. But you'll know you feel like crap at the end of the week and you know how to go right back to it. Yeah. But it's just like, it really helps put things in perspective and helps you to like, I don't know, anytime something helps you appreciate when you're eating too. Cause we do so much liquid stuff along with the fasting uh -huh. that like every time we eat something solid, it's just awesome. It's just yeah. such a, it's not like something we just slam down, you know, you're sitting there eating it and you're like closing your eyes, tilting your head back. Like <laughs> it really helps you to enjoy the food. Yeah. And I don't know, there's something about it. And I, I love to cook. So since I love to cook and take time doing that, I love to take time eating it. And I yeah. love to sit there and like watch the people I'm eating it with to see if they're enjoying it. Yeah. And it's just such a fun thing. So I don't know. Food's big for me. Sorry, me too. I went me off too. on a whole tangent there. No, no, no. <laughs> any, any tangent you want to go off on is completely, on, when I'm running the show, you can go on any tangent you want, because I'm as random as a Quentin Tarantino movie, bro. So anytime you want to jump on something like a, a Jack about it, you just go for it. And we'll, yes. we'll circle back around. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're still talking about food, I want to talk about hormone optimization. So I have uh, written like a metric ton of articles for multiple different companies out there floating around a lot in the UK, a lot in American stuff over the past few years on how to boost testosterone naturally. So we're going to talk about various foods you can eat at home that are going to boost your testosterone naturally and other things you can do to do this. So do you have any background on that? First of all, before I start flapping my gums is my question to you, Jim. Uh, it's pretty high above my pay grade. The most yeah. I can understand about it is that we need cholesterol and fat to help build that testosterone. So healthy sources and good sources of that are usually a good option. Eggs and avocados and all that good stuff. But that's about as far as I can go with it, man. <laughs> all right. Well, you hit it right on the head. That is definitely one of the number one things you can do is start integrating some of those foods in your diet. Um, coconut oil, avocados, nuts, seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds. I like red palm oil because it's also high in vitamin A and D, which is also good for inflammation reduction. And it boosts your immunity through the roof. Um, all those things are precursors to the release of testosterone in your system. So there's a series of other things you can do and foods you can eat that are going to boost it even more. Cruciferous vegetables. Yeah, I've, seen you, I've seen them in your skillet. So I know you know what those are. Oh, yeah. Cabbage. <laughs> bro cabbage, broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, um, chard, and kale are the six heavy hitters. Um, I put those through my rotation every single week. I eat them every single day. They're really good for lowering estradiol levels, which in turn takes testosterone and helps boost it through the roof. I'm not going to say through the roof, but it helps boost it. So if you get a good amount of fat in your diet and you get some cruciferous vegetables, those are two things, slam dunks right there. Now, here's another fun thing that you're going to appreciate. 20 to 30 minutes of sun exposure a day. Try to get as much of sun exposure on your skin as you can and do not use suntan lotion. Yes, I just said the deadly word. Do not use sunscreen because it is poisonous, especially the ones you buy in a conventional grocery store. Coconut oil, baby. Coconut oil works well. Sesame oil and coconut oil work well. You can make sesame. your own content. Sesame. Ooh, I haven't used that yet. We just la we just oil up with coconut and walk outside. I haven't used yep. sesame yet. Shea Thank butter. You for that. Betcha. Shea butter, coconut oil, sesame oil. Since it's summer, we'll talk about this right now. And shea. Yeah, shea. I've done it before. It's like a natural. Oh, I think it's. It's like five. thick too, so I can imagine it putting down some good protection. Right. Exactly. Damn. And and these oils are good because they're they're moisturizing to the skin too. And there's no emollients and there's no, there's no propylene glycol in there and, and no ingredients in them that you can't bounce. So why people don't go to these things, way beyond me, I don't know, but people are yelling at me all the time at the gym, you're gonna get cancer, you're gonna get cancer, you're out in the sun too much. And I say, get that negative crap away from me right now. I don't want you even saying the words in front of me. I don't attract a negative energy, so get it away from me. You don't know my story, you don't know how I treat the sun, you don't know what I do with my body, you don't know how I do it. Don't sit here and tell me I'm gonna get cancer. I won't, I won't, I refuse to believe it, I won't, I won't take it. So I use the sun strategically. I get it, I go out in the sun for my testosterone boost and then I'm done. Maybe an hour. I'll lie on my stomach, I'll lie on my back, I'll go out and I'll take my Indian clubs to the park, I'll play around with those, and then I'll go back inside, I'm done. No sunscreen, no nothing. If I'm gonna be out longer than an hour, I'll go with shea butter, coconut oil, any of those things we mentioned. If I'm gonna be out there for a really long time, I have a, an organic, I think it's all about organics, 
sunscreen that I'll put basically on the top of my head and that's it because the rest of my skin is now adapted because it's for three quarters of the way through summer and I have a good base. And I'm giving you people tips at home on what to do and how to avoid the, the propylene glycols and all that crap you get at the, at the local CVS. And yes, I'm going on record in saying that I feel that those things are bad for your skin. Just read the ingredient label. It's this thick and it's got tetrahydrolazoline in it, which you can't even pronounce. Again, we go back to, to point A. Let's keep it simple. If you can't pronounce an ingredient in anything, especially a pharmaceutical or a, um, a bath and body product that you're going to put on your skin. Remember, your skin is the biggest organ in the body. It is very absorbable. You ever swim for like 20 minutes or something like that and you have to pee really bad? It's because your, your skin just absorbs water. And if you're in a swimming pool of chlorine, you just absorb a metric ton of chlorine, I might add. Not even get down that, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole because I want to get people prepared. But I do not swim in swimming pools. Your skin is very absorbable. If you take a long shower, you're going to have to pee right afterward because you just absorbed a bunch of water. Now, if you put sunscreen on with all those chemicals on it, you go outside and you sweat a little bit, you have a thermal layer, the pores open, the sunscreen goes into your skin, you absorb all those chemicals. Then you come back inside and you have lunch or whatever. Then you take a shower hours later after the damage has already been done and all that stuff absorbed into your skin. That is how, my friends, your skin gets broken down. And in my opinion, that's how skin cancer develops. That's my opinion. I'm not a doctor. And I'm not going to shove anything in your face that I don't feel is legit. What I do is I look at things from a common sense perspective, and that's what it looks like to me. And that's why I try to avoid it. Do you agree with me on that or no? What's your take? Oh, if you're not going to eat it, you shouldn't put it on your skin. <laughs> that's a good point right there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to absorb it all. If you're not going to put it in your mouth, why would you put it on you? True. You can eat coconut oil. So, hey, why not? Exactly. So, so that pretty much sums it up for me. Yeah. <laughs> So just a quick three tips to, re to, to recap. Eat your healthy fats because testosterone needs fat to be produced. Get some cruciferous vegetables when you diet on a daily basis and get a little bit of sun exposure every single day as, as much as you can. Basically what happens is it's vitamin D that you want. The sun helps your body release vitamin D. Vitamin D is a precursor to testosterone release. So that's how the big picture comes together. Try to do those things and watch what happens. And men and women alike, I'm, I'm encouraging both of you to do it. Women don't, you don't produce as much testosterone as men. So in my mind, it's equally as important or even more important for you to try to get your testosterone boosted a little bit if you want to build lean muscle mass. And as you know, muscle raises your metabolic rate. So it's going to keep fat at a minimum. So why wouldn't you want to boost your testosterone? So go for the gold on that one. Now, Jim, are you aware that you, there's a special diet you can follow that helps create a natural SPF factor in your system? <laughs> no, but I'm all ears. <laughs> Seems like I'm doing a lot of the talking today. <laughs> Usually, get yeah, I, I like I like learning. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> and I don't like to hear myself talk. So. <laughs> oh, that's fine. We all like to hear you talk. So, anyway, that's if, <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, anyway, lycopene, vitamin A, and vitamin D are three heavy hitters. If you eat those foods that are high in those three things. You can actually create a natural SPF factor because people tell me all the time, like, dude, you get you have such a nice tan. You have such a nice tan. I hear from men and women alike all summer long. You do have a very nice tan, by the way. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> One of the reasons why is because I am half Italian. My skin kind of like adapts well. But the other half, and it, this is the big one, is I look at through the medium of food for everything. If I have a pain or an ache or you know, like I'm feeling depressed or whatever, I look at my diet and say, how can I tweak my diet to fix it? And I do the research and I find out what I can do to make it better. I already told you all the story about the testosterone. Now we're going to talk about the sun specifically. So you want to eat foods that are high in lycopene, high in vitamin A, high in vitamin D, high in essential fatty acids, and also that have um, epigallocatechin gallate, EGCG, in them. That green, right tea. There, green tea, my brother, yes. Drink green tea. Drink kombucha that's made with green tea. Eat a lot of carrots. Eat a lot of sweet potatoes and yams in the summer. Um, any kind of tomato products that are like ketchup, sauce, Salsa, those kind of things that are condensed are going to have a higher amount of lycopene than just plain tomatoes. In fact, the degradation of produce has gotten so bad to these days, to, to a point these days, that the lycopene content in tomatoes is very, very low. Staggering. So you want to get it in a concentrated form. So then you want to go to a paste or a sauce or a ketchup or a salsa or something like that to get your lycopene hit every single day. And then, like, same thing um, for the testosterone boosting. You want to get yourself some avocados, nuts, seeds, good oils nut butters, those kind of things for your for your healthy fats. And then we already addressed the um, the green tea stuff. So following a diet that's high in those things will create a natural SPF factor in your system. And it has been proven, I believe I even read it on the Mayo Clinic's website, for all you people like research out there, 
that that type of diet is preventative for skin cancer. So everyone who yells at me that tells me I'm going to get skin cancer, know right now that that is what I do in the summer. I follow a diet that's more like that. And I don't eat a lot because I do fasting. I have like two meals a day, sometimes three. But I guarantee you that my meals are going to have consist of all those foods I just mentioned. And I will definitely drink my daily hit of kombucha because I started a kombucha business. So I got like six gal six to ten gallons in my refrigerator at all times. You have a kombucha business? Yeah, did I tell you? Ah. Huh. Yeah, That's I started. Awesome. Yeah, I started with my friend Chad, and um, we're uh, we're, we're come up come up with a Kickstarter campaign. We actually did a uh, video for it. It's in editing right now. We're working on our reward system and our campaign page. So all you people watching at home, please, when our Kickstarter gets launched, let's circle back and throw us a couple bones if you're okay with that. If you're a kombucha lover, or if you're a fan of fermented foods, or if you're a fan of um, just healthy living at all, uh, period. But yeah, mm -hmm. so I've got a bunch in the fridge. When you come out to visit sometime down the road, I will definitely hook you up with some booch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. What's the company called? Pro Ambition. Pro Ambition? Yeah, not Prohibition, Pro Ambition. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> a little spin on words. I like to do plays on words all the time. You know, it's just fun. Oh, yeah, you got a, you got a punk rock background. All yes, albums exactly. And stuff like that. You always play around with that kind of stuff with the tours. It's always a yeah. play on words. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got to roll down that uh, rabbit hole from time to time. So that's just how it is. Um, I want to talk about trolls right now. We recently had a friend who was victimized by sexual harassment when all she was doing was posting videos on Instagram and fit Facebook. I'm not going to mention names, who she is. I'm going to keep her identity un indisclosed. But I am getting, I'm starting to get fed up with every time I turn Instagram on, I see nothing but, I see, I see fake lips, fake boobs, and fake butts everywhere. Selfie after selfie after selfie after selfie. I literally see women taking pictures of their boobs saying, 10 mile run today, I'm getting ready for Ragnar. And I'm like, okay. And you show me your boobs and your fake lips? I could care less about your boobs and fake lips. Show me, show me running on a trail. Show me a picture of you with cut off shorts on, dirty and filthy because you're running on the trail or something. I don't want to see this fake crap going on. The fitness injury is starting to get oversaturated right now, in my opinion, with fakeness and fakeness and trolls. And when I say trolls, I'm talking about, I'll post a video on uh, a dish I make or something like that. And I'll say, high in antioxidants, high in vitamin C, high in fiber, cruciferous vegetables, help boost your testosterone. And then someone will have, someone has got to chime in and have a complaint about it. Oh, well, you have quinoa in there and quinoa has been known to cause acidity in the system and it's not good for the system and blah, blah, blah. Somebody has got to have a negative comment always. And someone is, mm -hmm. there's always the guy out there that has to troll someone and do sexual harassing comments to them. And all this other stuff is happening and it, it's it's starting to get infected right now. How do we fix this, Jim? You've seen it too. I don't think it's anything we fix. You Like it's honestly fix it by being the best you you can be because you're setting the example and you're living the example. When people do that kind of sh stuff, they are generally unhappy. They're generally not thrilled with what's going on in their lives. So they're lashing out in a negative way towards the void that is the internet they just figure they could you know it's not personal they're not next to you so they can say this stuff right to you and it's it's not a big deal where it, it makes it so impersonal but you can still do it so when people aren't happy with their lives and they have a platform where a lot of people can hear them they might just lash out and say stupid stuff and it's sad <laughs> so when you see that it, it it can make you angry and can piss you off but then when you think about it on the like a deeper level it's like that person's probably just miserable you know, and it sucks if they're miserable. So as, as much as, as annoying as it can be, they're the ones that are bummed. They're the ones that probably aren't happy with life. So you end up just kind of feeling bad for them. You know, like I, I used to get mad about a lot of things too. And then when you start, I start thinking more about it, the people I get like the most mad at are usually the ones I just feel the worst for in the end. You know? That's a, yeah, that's a very good point. And I think oftentimes people are intimidated by people like, you or me or that friend that I'm talking about because we have ambition because we are out trying to, to change the, the the globe we're trying to do good things we're trying to follow a noble purpose we're trying to do good things for our bodies we're trying to do good things for other people as well and it's those people that they, they don't have the I think the biggest ones that troll other people's posts are those that don't have that ambition and they they feel maybe intimidated and they're like I can be a bully back here because they they don't know who where I'm at or whatever and they won't find me. So I could be as strong as an ox back here. And if ever confronted face to face with these people, any of us, they would they would not say a word. They have their head down and they walk away probably. 
Oh yeah, that's that's ninety five percent of people online are even on the road. Think about how much more animated people are and they're in their car because they figure yeah. they're safe in their car. Yeah. You know, when you're on the other side of a screen, you get a different feeling. You know, it's like you're at a zoo. You're like, oh, this lion's not going to get me. But every now and again, the lion gets out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I careful totally. with that crap. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's sad, man. It really, that's just how it is. They, people have a platform. They're going to be heard if they're miserable and they see people doing fun stuff or things that are challenging or trying to better themselves. Like how many times do you see that in like just normal life where if you're trying to improve yourself or you see someone that is, people around them will talk shit because they don't want that person to improve themselves because they don't want to see someone grow and thrive because they don't want to do it themselves. They're too lazy to make the effort. So they don't want to see someone else doing something they're too lazy to do, or, you know? So yeah. it's, it's a weird, it's an, it's an animalistic thing, but we're animals. We just own furniture and have clothes. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're trying. We're trying to get away from that 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 kind of stuff. Yeah. Like we have to see like that stuff that's programmed into us like that. That's so like natural. It's not yeah. necessarily what's best, you know. Envy and greed and stuff like that's natural, but it's not necessarily what's best. Yeah. So we have to kind of watch for that kind of stuff. What comes natural, but what's beneficial? What's helpful in the long run? <laughs> that's true. And you know, I've been I've been going through this big transformation myself over the past. Uh, it, literally like the past five to seven days and i i'm going to share something with all you people out there and you jim too and you're going to agree with me 100 percent. you may, we've had a couple um conversations uh maybe a month or so ago I, you, you requested that i shot a video on this philosophy that i have and i now have a new i have a new philosophy yet so every day i do three things i live in the present moment i do at least one at least one thing beyond my comfort zone and i do at least one good deed for somebody else without any expectation of anything in return. And when I say at least, I have to do at least one of those things every single day. And now I'm to the point where I do those three things, plus I pick up at least one piece of trash that I see floating around every day. And I'm starting a new coalition here in town with some friends of mine, and we're gonna try to create awareness on, on picking up garbage. Because here in Park City, it is one of the more pristine towns in the, in the nation. Um, it's heralded as like one of the best ski resort towns there is. You know, we got Vail now took over their ski resort. So that's like a big, a big economic boon to the town. Not that we needed it, but it is. And it's expanding really fast. But I go out on, when I have an hour or two to kill, I go grab a garbage bag and my picker upper and I just go out and pick up garbage. And we don't have a ton compared to other places like an East Coast or like in the middle of the United States. And I'm not trying to, you know, downplay any of those areas. If any of you live out there, I'm just telling you personal experience. I, I grew up in the Northeast, Northeast Pennsylvania. So I know how dirty it is out there. The, the trash is abundant. But I'm, I'm sick and tired of, of watching people walk on sidewalks or walk on trails, almost tripping over like paper cups and straws and like garbage bags and like, like rubbish and filth. I am, I'm a naturalist at heart. I, I run barefoot. I lie in the grass shirtless. I walk around shirtless. I walk into buildings if I could shirtless, but I don't only my own building here. We'll get to that in a second. Um, and I'm in the, I'm in this big phase right now where I'm just like, I'm so in love with the earth and I just can't get enough of it. I can't get enough of the outdoors. I want to keep it clean. I want to make it cleaner. I want to make it a better place. I'm big into reduce, reuse, recycle, zero waste policies. Like our pro ambition company is, is big into like zero waste. We, we try to even recycle the fruit we use for our second fermentations and give it to a friend of ours who has a dog biscuit company who's going to start reusing the fruit to make dog biscuits with. So we want to have as little waste as possible. And we even have sample cups that, that will grow plants if someone throws them out into, into a yard after two weeks. They're made of grains and seeds. That's awesome. So, yeah. So... What I'm trying to say is, if you ever get accosted by somebody through social media or in person or behind your back or whatever, always remember, it's it's not the words that mean anything. It's only your interpretation of the words. It's, Jim can sit here and call me the biggest butthead in the face of the earth right now to my face, or he can say it behind my back, and I can see a video of him saying it. And I can get angry and mad and start throwing things and pick up chairs and throw them through windows and say, what a jerk, and I can retaliate. Or I can just go, well, it's only words. I'm still healthy, I'm still alive, I didn't lose any limbs, nothing happened. So whenever you're confronted with a situation like that, you can easily medicate the situation by just staying calm, taking a couple deep breaths and realizing it's only words and it's only your reaction to those words that matter. So you can lash back and you're just gonna, no one ever wins in a fight, remember that. Even if, you know, in Mike Tyson's greatest days when he used to beat the crap out of everybody, he'd still leave the fight sore, he'd have maybe a little mark on his face or something, but. He may have theoretically won the fight, but he still had marks on him. So you never win a fight. 
always you always have the choice though to walk away from something unscathed and it's only your attachment to the words that matter and well, you had a video out about a month ago that was something along those lines and then i said i told you my three things and you're like you're like shoot a video on that so i did i shot that video and i want you to explain a little bit more on what you said in your video do you remember what it was uh, is that the one where it was like people that are crushing it you should just don't That's worry about crushing it you should just start being nice because there's plenty of people crushing in the world but there's not enough nice people yes that uh, was the one yeah and everyone wants to get ahead in life and be prosperous this that and the other but no one wants to help anybody else do it or they want to step on somebody else's head to get there. It's pointless. You know, why, why, why be on top of the hill by yourself? Why not, why not bring everybody else up with you? You know, you can, get, you can get a lot further with a lot of people in a group than you are on your own, making enemies, things like that. So Absolutely. it's just, I don't know, not enough people are nice. I think it's just kind of bottom line. And it's, right? if we had more of that, the world would be so much better. It's simple, but it it's not easy. And it, that's just it. Like simple things aren't necessarily easy to do. So, but it's one simple thing that could help make shit stuff so much better. So much better. <laughs> it is. And you know, it's really easy to memorize these two words that I use all the time. And I always use these as hashtags. Be kind. Just stop yourself. Before you do something aggressive or angrily to somebody else or anything other, other than being kind, stop yourself and ask yourself, am I being kind or not? And if you're not being kind, then be kind. It's really that simple. And be and kind to yourself, to... too. Yeah, exactly. You have to kind of <laughs> be good to yourself. Just like Journey said back in 1983, whenever that song came out, which is a good tune <laughs> I might have. <laughs> Classic. Yes. Love it. Hey, brother, you All know right. what time it is by any chance? It's 4.30. 4.37. What? 4.37? How much time you got? I'm supposed to be at a class at 4.30. No, it's 4.37 my time. Oh, Jesus. What's, where are you at? <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Park City, Utah, man. I'm Mountain so Time. Three, so it's 3.37 for my time? Yeah, how much time you got? Uh, I got 23 minutes. Okay, cool. Hey, you got oh, time. Good. I was like, dude, I had to be out of class seven minutes ago. Start. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Let's talk about your class. What, what, what is this class you're going to be teaching? Oh, I, I just cover a class over at Balance Point. Like, they'll do, it's kind of like a large group personal training, essentially. Okay. And so they were a CrossFit gym three years ago, a little before I moved here. And they switched over because they didn't like the mindset of just like everybody being hyper competitive and form going out the window just to get numbers and everybody yeah. being clicky and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like they uh, kind of branched off, did their own thing. And they've been just been, I don't know, bringing in coaches from different places and kind of just tailoring their game little by little and switching it up and, I just help cover classes and hang out with people. It's pretty Sweet, fun. Man. Like fun. I, I, I needed somewhere to be because before we left, I started just doing stuff just online and just from my house. Yeah. And I kind of went crazy doing that. So it's like, I need to be a part of a group where I get yeah. to see people on a regular basis and hang out. And, you know, like, I love it, man. It's such a cool group of people. It reminds me of the being back home where everyone's, awesome. it's just like a big family. Everyone's so chill. Everyone gives each other hugs. And like, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> That's all. So my, oh, sorry. I say my buddy does the programming and we just, whatever the routine is that day, I just look at it, think of a warm up and a cool down for it and then take everybody through it and chill. So it's kind of fun. I just kind of go by somebody else's format and I just like, Hey, how could I, you know, help people get the most from this? And it's helped me with my game and the way I look at stuff so much because I never did any CrossFit ever before I ever got here and they gave me a taste of it. And I could see how it is and stuff. I was like, oh, okay, this is how it works. This is, this is what they're about, you know? So I've gotten a taste for it, and it's really helped me to see different sides of things and play around stuff differently. And these past couple of years, being here at Balance Point, I think has helped me grow like I never had before. And That's it's awesome. just being around so many cool people. And honestly, being hooked up with you guys from the past year and a half, two years of having our little Jedi Council and having so many cool coaches to get inspiration from. Like, man, dude, I'm so grateful to be a part of that group. It's awesome. It is. It's awesome. And I, I can speak on behalf of everyone else that we've learned a ton of stuff from you um, from a fitness perspective, spiritual perspective, everything all around. And one of the things that I love about you is the fact that you're so authentic. And I, I don't really sense a, like a, um, a scheming or scamming bone in your body. And you always know what you're going to get when you when you come on air, or when you do a video or something like that. And that's the kind Thank of people you, that I gravitate. Yeah, you're welcome. 
those are the kind of people I like to gravitate towards because I, I kind of just wear my life on my sleeve when I have shirts with sleeves on. And, <laughs> I, and I, I, I sometimes intimidate people. Like, I get this sometimes at the gym that I work out. People walk up to me like, I watch your videos. They're so amazing, blah, blah, blah. Man, I'd love to train with you, but... And I'm like, what do you mean, but? But what? Oh, you're so intense. You're this, you're this, you're this. I'm like, the way that I train myself is not indicative of how I train people. I'm like, I'm like, don't get the wrong impression. I'm like, everyone is a is an abstract mosaic form, and I treat everybody differently. And if you can't move, we're going to start from the ground up. If you come to me and you said, I've done CrossFit before, and I didn't like it. I hurt my back. I hurt my shoulder. I'm like, all right, well, let's work on the injury. And then we'll work on getting you a little bit more high-intensity stuff that's more in your wheelhouse. And I try to find a sweet spot with everybody. But it's like, I feel like sometimes I'm my, my biggest strength and my worst enemy because people get intimidated to work out with me because they see me swinging maces and meals and Indian clubs and, and endless amount of kettlebell snatches. But it's that's the way that I train myself because that's my, you know, it took me years to get to the point of that. And right. I sometimes feel a little down about the fact that that people say things to me like that. And, and they're complimenting me, a bit, but in disguise, you know, I still have to survive and make money mm -hmm. and live. And I, have, I get like, you know, I miss out on opportunities sometimes because of the lifestyle I lead, but I'm not going to compromise that for anything or anybody else. And I'm going to present myself the way I am 100% of the time because it's 100% authentic. And that's what I love about you because you are the exact same way and your way, you have a, a much better way of translating your stuff across on screen than I do because I, I can see when I watch my videos that I can be a little intimidating because I, I'm just so no nonsense. But you're like a little bit more zen than I am. <laughs> <You're down laughs> level, level five or six, I'm like level 10 at all times. I'm just a goofball, man. I think that's that kind of helps people to be relate to me. It's just, I'm just a goofball, and I'm not. I don't take things super serious. So you know, so I think that helps out like a lot. But man, again, you can't apologize for being awesome and for being where you're at. That's just reflexive on how people feel about themselves. They see you and how you look and what you've accomplished, and it's up to them to think, oh, this guy would do that to me. It's like obviously not. He obviously knows his shit, and he obviously would, is a great teacher. And he's going to make sure that you're going to do what you can do as safely as possible. But they'd rather tell themselves that you would just beat them up instead of making the effort and try to actually progress to what you're doing and be taught and be humble about it. So yep. it's, easier to, it's easier to write you off that way and to have you feel that than admit like, oh, no, I'm just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, again, you can't don't don't. Don't worry about that. You're being you. You're being authentic. You're just being awesome. Other people have a hard time dealing with that. Well, you know? I appreciate that. Yeah, totally. So do not apologize for anything, sir. You're, yeah. you're inspiring as all hell. <laughs> appreciate, it. appreciate it. So I want to ask you, I want to talk to you about kettlebells really quick. So I have always had a love affair with kettlebells. And kettlebells? <laughs> yeah, cattle balls, actually. Cattle balls. Yeah, cattle balls. <laughs> I use them up on the farm here up the street, actually. I heard the cattle. <laughs> um, they are, they've been at, they've had a place in my heart for years and they're still like, I, I still have to say they're like one of my number one tools. I feel they've lost a little bit of steam as, as being talked about as one of the top go-tos, but they still are my go-to tool. And I know you use kettlebells too. And I want to ask you, what is your favorite kettlebell exercise? And what do you feel is the most effective kettlebell exercise? I'm going to hit oh. you with a real tough question. Well, the second one is just super relative, effective for what? You know, it depends, it depends on what it's effective for. So oh, that's, a, like, you got me there. That's a good question. Let's uh, say uh, overall, overall strength level. What do you feel is the most effective exercise? Just developing Overall's. some degree of like maximum strength kind yes. of thing. Mm -hmm. Would a complex count or just one movement? Because uh, I would, I'd go with some kind of complex or a flow. Because you're well, going to combine we can... a bunch of comp, like, you know, combine big movements together into one kind of movement and you're going to kind of get a better effect than just one thing or a few things paired up separately. Actually, uh, this, is all, this is sort of a trick question. I kind of already know the answer. <laughs> and it's a single exercise. It's not a combo. It's not a complex. Okay, you just want to go with a single exercise? Hmm. Honestly, dude, just because I like them so much, Renegade Rose. Really? I, lo I love those damn things. Your renegade rows are so much fun, especially they if you're are. all meant to renegade row up to a, a swing, clean squat press. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. you can tie them into so many different things, but having to keep that like cross body stability while staying squared up at the ground, not twisting, not sinking, not yeah. overly lifting, it, it just to uh, hit so many things that can go unnoticed through a lot of other movements. 
You know what I mean? It yeah. can point out a lot of weak spots. I think is more the thing. It's not necessarily best for build developing strength, but it's really good for pointing out where you could be lacking. Gotcha. That's a good one. My personal favorite is the Turkish get up. And it's always, I, I blend it into my program about every, every other month. I don't go like a full four weeks without throwing the Turkish get up back in. I feel that exercise has the most return on investment of anything I've ever done in my life. And once you start getting up in heavier weights, it's like you feel everything from your fingertips to your toenails after you do a good set of like five each arm is all. I think the Turkish get up, the reason I feel that, that is the best exercise for application of strength too is because it, it strengthens your body in a way that's going to make you stronger in other things. And it's going to transfer over to Olympic lifts, to deadlifts, to overhead, um, you know, overhead presses, military presses, pull-ups. It improves your thoracic spine mobility. It improves your shoulder stability. It enables you to lift heavier weights with other things. I think that's the gold standard personally. Oh, that's opinion. awesome. For sure. You're changing levels. You're moving the kettlebell a greater distance than you would in any one thing. And you're yeah. doing it all overhead. All, any one of those things is a huge factor, let alone all three together. Yeah. You know? So but for me, a Turkish get up is a complex. <laughs> well, it sort of is. I would say it's a, a, a compound movement, multi joint movement. All I, right. I would say, that I would say Turkish get ups with snatches at the top of each one would be a complex for me. Just saying. I get that. Yeah. <sighs> but since we're on the topic of complexes, this is also why I love kettlebells so much. Jim, Jim mentioned earlier. He said pairing things together. So when you pair two or more exercises together, it's called a complex. So if you do like a swing, a clean, a press, you've just done three exercises. If you do a swing, clean, squat press, you've done four. And the kettlebell enables you to do these things gracefully, smoothly, and quickly, better than any other type of training instrument, better than dumbbells, better than barbells, better than anything. And that is why, another reason why I love them so much is because you can accumulate so much muscle fiber recruitment in a very short amount of time that they have a really high return on investment in a short amount of time as well. So, I mean, in 20 minutes, you can just have a, a blasted workout that would equal a 60-minute workout otherwise if you're taking, if you're doing like three sets of 10 of things. So that's another reason why I love the kettlebell so much. And you were mentioning that just a minute ago. So now let's fast forward to what is your favorite complex? Oh, dude, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many, but I can say that one of my favorite things to do is take a kettlebell on a walk. And to just put it all around my body in different ways and actually swing it around my body uh -huh. really fast or swing it around into a clean, swing it around into a clean on the opposite side and just keep doing that as I go for a walk. So oh, you're combining a bunch of different smaller things, whether it's around the waist or whatever, where on the waist slow, around the waist fast, or you can kind of have different arcs and angles with it where it's going yeah. around like a circle or it's going around like an ellipses, you know, yeah. so you can have different little types you're swinging it around too. And the whole time you're trying to, coordinate your walk while keeping your uh keeping your posture keeping your stride without it breaking up while and you're swinging something around the whole body like so it's such a trip having to stabilize all around your body while you're walking forward and doing wow. a couple different directions like and it's just so engaging and it's so much fun and i'm like i don't know man i don't have a dog so it's kind of like <laughs> what i get to go do <laughs> it makes it more fun for me to go my walks so <laughs> until i get a dog i'm just gonna keep walking my kettlebells <laughs> Super fun, though. Yeah. Super fun. <laughs> and I've really been digging in. You mentioned the ellipses and the circles, and I've really been digging into those circular patterns with the kettlebells over the past couple of years, and I love, love, love them. It's a whole different dimension of kettlebell training. Some people do it out there. You got to dig around to find them. It is so much more fun and adds so much more depth to kettlebell training, and I feel, you know, I feel the circles and the spirals and the figure eights and those ellipses are super, super good for the joint integrity as well. And you can do it with light, light, lighter kettlebells, and get the same effect you would if you had like an Indian club or a meal or a mace or something along those lines. And yeah. I have these special soft kettlebells made out of leather that I love to do circular patterns with. And you can just, you can do like 15 minutes straight on those things and you're, you're just gonna be gassed and you don't need a ton of weight, like 15 to 20 pounds. Yeah, the torque like contraction is wonderful, man. Our joints and our body loves that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that adds years to your life, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, especially through your joints and stuff. And it makes you stronger when you are doing your heavy lifts because you want your joints to, you know, be as mobile and flexible as possible. So those kind of things yeah. can help you. Big Even time. it doesn't add years, it's going to make the years we have that much better. Yeah, you know, totally. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, I got one more question to ask, and this is how I always end every single guest. What is your favorite ice cream? Dude, we just found this one recently. It was a dark chocolate. What was it? 
dark chocolate with dark chocolate chunks, oh. a little bit of caramel, and I think like an almond, like almonds in it. Couldn't tell you the brand, couldn't tell you what it was called, but that's what was in it. Incredible. Wow. So good. So good. I'm a, I'm a, I love chocolate. I love that's chocolate. So do I. And I, I love, love nuts. Chocolate. So if that's going to be in there, I'm, I'm set right there. Oh, dude. <laughs> You got to find the name you? of that. My favorite, I, I, my favorite ice cream usually oscillates from like month to month. And I, yes, I'm human and I do eat ice cream. And I might, people accuse oh, yeah. me of having no body fat percentage, but believe me, I've got the biggest Italian sweet tooth on the face of this earth. And you can ask anyone who knows me well about my sweet tooth. It's part of fasting, yes, yes. baby. When you fast, you can That's have right. a little bit of leeway. That's right. <laughs> and my leeway points me in the direction of ice cream. So right now, currently, Good as man. we speak, my favorite ice cream is birthday cake halo top. Dude. And if you don't know if Halo Top is, I highly suggest you get it for all you ice cream holics out there who are trying to cut calories. It is Isn't a that low like the fat-free one, though? No, it's not fat-free, I don't think. Oh, it's, okay. Oh, that's Arctic Zero or something. Arctic like Zero. I have some of those fat-free yeah. ones. Yeah, it's horrible. Horrible. And that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halo Top is much better. It's more creamy. And uh, I don't really, I don't like Arctic Zero. Maybe we shouldn't be using proper names, but I'll just tell it like it is. I don't, I don't like it. I'm, I'm just one person. Who am I to say? I'm not going to get a sponsorship from it. What do I care? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We're just talking smack. But yeah. Halo Top, Halo Top birthday cake is my favorite. And you let it sit on the counter for a little while and get softened up and it gets really creamy and it's delicious. And Look you, at you, feel... you got a process and everything. I got the process. <laughs> Dude, I'll microwave that stuff if I need to. If I need to soften it up and I only have a certain time to get into my eating window, I'll do it. I'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's gonna make this work. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So the fun thing is, it's high in protein and it's high in fiber at the same time too, and it's got nice. ingredients. So that's my favorite ice cream right there. So Ooh. last thing, I, last thing I want to address is pine pollen with coconut oil and what else? No, no, no. pine pollen with coconut water, water. and lemon oil. Oh, so you lemon. put that together, and it's unreal. Especially if you're gonna sweat a lot or you're gonna go out somewhere where it's hot it has been a savior for me it's wow. so incredible like i it's always 110 here or more or around Ugh. and i sweat more than anybody i know and that's wow. one thing that i can drink and it makes me feel great feel fresh like it's awesome <laughs> definitely Dude, digging this stuff that's exciting so anyway yeah for any of you out there who want to get some pine pollen um you can get it in tincture form or powder like i said earlier and i forgot there's also a coupon code you could use pollen 10, all capital letters, pollen, 10. You get a 10% discount on your purchase of pine pollen. Pine pollen is a, a super... Yeah, what a bargain. What a bargain. Pine pollen, <laughs> pine pollen is another thing that helps boost testosterone levels and balance out your hormones. It helps with brain function. It's an antioxidant. boosts your immunity. And it's chock full of a bunch of other vitamins and minerals. Just try it. Just try it. Just get some and try it. That's all. But Do like, it. Do it. You say. Uh, Matt Foley <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. Just let the boy pet your dog already. <laughs> was the hurley he boy remember the hurley he boy no oh dude. how long wait what era was that that was the let's see that was the early nine early to mid 90s dude i am going to youtube you some clips of, of the hurley he boy later you're going to laugh so hard you're going to fall down hilarious Please do. yes looking forward to it <laughs> okay. all right jim you have anything else closing out here how can people find you where, where could they follow you at uh jim romig and internal roots movement on facebook instagram twitter and uh, i got a youtube channel that i'm bu really building up and putting you know like in-depth tutorial and content on and uh trying to get at least three to five videos a week on there so check it out if you guys want and uh yeah i'll keep putting crap out <laughs> awesome jim thank you so much for being my guest today it was an honor to talk to you as usual and thank you for having watch, me brother you better be here cool any of you watching at home out there, if you're going to be out in Redding, California area, definitely hook, get hooked up with Jim. He's one of the best in the industry as we speak right now. And I'm not just saying that because we have the same affiliations, but he is the real deal. He can help you move better. He can help you think straighter, and he can improve your mood as well, much like a bowl of ice cream. Except he'll be much <laughs> that is the best analogy I've ever had. Thank you very much, brother. <laughs> you got it. You're far too kind. All right, cool. All right, it's been a great show. This has been Trainful Longevity episode number six and if you guys have any comments or questions on today's show hit me up or talk to jim as well and i'll see you on the flip side enjoy your night people adios Much